The Women's Leadership Institute in the Auburn University College of Liberal Arts is pleased to present Leaders Educating Through Discussion. We hope you will take a moment after you watch our presentation to add your own voice to the dialogue on our website, auburn.edu slash women's leadership. We need to introduce each other in the world and to think of each other in the world because we need to authorize and we need men to authorize us. It is wonderful to have men like Warren Buffett say, I really think we got to have women in leadership. We need male allies. Make allies of the young men here. And men, make allies of the woman because remember your brains rest. <laughs> You'll need them to be doing things while your brains are resting. But at any rate, um, authorization is important, and a part of that authorization comes from the media, comes from being seen, comes from being visible, because it's who gets known. Uh, Marion Wright Edelman also used to say, you can't be what you can't see. You cannot be what you can't see. And if you don't see enough women, there's now a film called Misrepresentation that you should bring to campus if you haven't. Oh, good. You have. Okay. No, yes. But it's wonderful because it's made uh, to show how the media starts to depict women in ways that they lose authority, that they actually don't see the things they could be. And by the way, there are some new television programs out there that while they are about international crime and local crime and et cetera, have some great tough female leaders, so things are looking up. But that whole area of being seen is really important. Being noticed, you have to put each other out in the, ta in the paper in the school. You have to actually figure out how people come in who uh, build, build on the, in the notion of women's leadership. Um, I have been outrageous about this. I was lucky. I had a, a friend uh, who died recently named Wilma Mankiller. And Wilma Mankiller was the chief of the Cherokee Nation, and I had never... I had never actually met a, a Native American chief. I was so excited. I moved to New York in 85, 86, and she came to New York, and I was like, I went rushing over there because I thought, this is great. And I walked in, and the men were huddled along the sides of the wall. And I went over, and I said, what is going on? And they said, well, my man killer is here. I said, she doesn't look armed, but God, what do I know, you know? I mean, you know, so there, and she stood up, but she was a, a very brave woman and amazing. And she stood up, and she really knew two things. She said, I just want to reassure you that my real name is not man killer. And so there was this, it is white man killer. <laughs> and I will never forget it, because she knew what was going on in the room. She said, there, you know, and so she just disarmed it with humor. She disarmed it with humor. I mean, which humor is a great thing in a movement. Learn to laugh and be with people who are funny. If they're not funny, try to figure out why they're around you. Because <laughs> you really need, in tough times, to have people who have some sense of humor. But not only that, she knew that you start where people are. And so when we did the White House project, I was lucky. I, uh, I actually had to raise money, which is a hard thing to do. And by the way, if you can raise money, you can do anything in life. But I went over to Mattel, and they wouldn't give me money. And I was very upset because, uh, you know, I needed it so badly. And then they said, I said, well, you should just make that doll a president at the White House. You, could, you can make the dream house into a White House and should have something to dream about. I was mad. And they said, what a great idea. And I went, oh, no, you're going to make a, they made, they made Mattel White House President Barbie. Yeah, this is White House. she will come out her fourth time this year. And then I thought about it. I have all these children. They had Barbies. Most of the time, they were lying around the floor naked, you know. And when you dress them, they were princesses. Why not have her be a president, right? I got really brave about it. And then I thought about what Mel, Wilma used to tell me. You start where people are, Marie. And so I started working on television, movies. We were the ones behind Commander-in-Chief for those brief six weeks it was on. You know, we tried to get... You know, media matters. Doing things outrageously sometimes matters, but getting people visible matters. Having women on television that are actually authorities matters. Um, but you have to be, you in a college, you have to get people seen, and that's important. And finally, I have worked a long time to figure out how we have women trust their ability. <laughs> How he has them trust their ability. I, I, when I first started working and re writing this book that I wrote, Closing the Leadership Gap, I wrote down the first sentence I wrote is, when will the world trust women and when will women trust themselves? 
because trusting in your abilities, that's why I'm talking a little bit about you don't always have to be an engineer to change the computer industry. I mean, you should get an education, thank God, some of us did. But you don't have, you can be outside of that, you know? Women's abilities have been narrowed in this country. Culturally, it's never changed. The image of women in America is still of wife and mother. Well, wife and mother, that is still the cultural image. And it's a great image. I have chosen it a couple of times. <laughs> but it's really not all. And if we want to change the world for our children, then it has to be beyond that. Because what women have done in leadership, how they have collaborated, how they have brought people together, the, the skills that they have as one of my friends wrote from Simmons College, Joyce Sudley, often turn into mothering and not into leadership. I want to tell you women, those are leadership skills. I mean, it's the only way that decisions are going to be made that are good, and you are going to have some hard decisions because the Human Genome Project, what we are learning about that, is going to make this world more complicated than the computer industry ever was because the ice cap is melting, the world will be more complicated. And so it's important. And how are we going to do this? I just want to say one thing. I'll tell you one story and end. We're going to do it by sticking together. Everything is set up for women to be divided. Everything is set up for women to be divided because keeping us divided is what keeps us from power. And I want to tell you the last story. We had an International Women's Leadership Summit bringing 88 world leaders in to see how we could shift the security paradigm. And um, the woman that, one of the women that spoke from Rutgers, uh, from the Carr Center, told this story that I will never forget. She said, you know, in Rwanda, uh, during the massacre there, during the uprisings in Rwanda, uh, there was a girls' school, 12-year-old girls, uh, Tutsi and Hutu girls, and the rebels came into the school, and they looked at the girls, and they said, divide yourselves. And the girls were terrified, as you can imagine, and they started whipping the machetes around. And they said, divide yourselves. And the girls kept looking at each other, you know, because Tutsi, Hutu, Tutsi, Hutu, Tutsi, Hutu. Divide yourselves. And finally, the girls looked at each other, and one of them told, the, told the, uh, the rebels, we will not be divided. We will not be divided. Twelve-year-old girls, we will not be divided. And I started again to think, God, if 12-year-old girls with machetes flying can figure out a way to be as brave as to tell people they won't be divided. Surely American women can figure out in our groups and whatever how we are working together, how we work together. Um, they were tortured. They weren't killed. They were tortured. They weren't killed. The women of South Africa have stood up to the men when they first got the vote and said, we want actually to have 30% of the seats of the African National Congress, and the men said no. And the women said, we want 30% of the seats. And the women, the men said, no. The women got together and said, we will have 30% of the seats of the African National Congress or we will vote against you. The men said, okay. <laughs> That's why the world is changing. That's how Norway started a movement that is now getting 30% of the board seats dedicated to women because women won and stayed together. I thank you for coming out on a rainy day and for your attention and for the fact that you're here and are going to take on all these things and, and you were cared enough to come, so thank you very much.